Morning everybody and uh, welcome to MDTV. Special morning this morning. We've got Simon here from Reassense. Oh, yeah. um, it's just yet again to show you that we do stock the whole range. From your Eco Assist, which is your smaller one, to jump, to jump, to jump, right away through to the Beast at the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to Simon as we go along through this and just ask him one or two questions about one or two things. But before we do that, one thing that I've found out this morning which was very interesting was these are obviously made in Europe, they're actually made for Nordic countries. Over there, what you get, lots of snow, lots of ice. If you put a wheel assist from other companies on the front of your chair, a lot of them scrabble to get any traction. So, I bring Simon in, watch what Reassense have done, and it works so well in Sweden because of the snow and ice. They've actually done this so that you can have some slides on the side and you put a weight on each side. Now that seems quite primitive, but that one does it work. So, as you can see that slid on, I'll do this one at this side to show you how easy it is. You just line them up, he says, and it just slides in. You can lock them down with an Allen key if you think they're going to bounce off. It's maybe wise to do that, but it does make them heavier, but it just puts the traction down on the floor so that you get a real good ride out of them. And it's actually another way of actually keeping things a little bit cheaper because you can actually buy one of the smaller ones but still get good traction. Any comments on that? No, when you look at the traction, I will look at the tyres as well. Um, so if you're going off-roading, you're going to be better off to go for an alternative tyre, even like this one here, just to give you a bit more grip. Um, with that and with the weights on, you shouldn't have a problem. So it'll do most things won't it most things yeah yeah um, now you know going forward i mean from that we've actually done the clamping system on another video we've seen it where um david who uh, who's going to be your demonstrator in the future drives up and it just clamps on and lifts you up that's one of these we do it with a standard clamping system you know so you lock them in yourselves there is a way of cheating with that as well but we'll do that in another video or another day um you can also get your knobbly tires for your wheelchair don't forget you can use your wheelchair you don't have to use a rear sense wheelchair however saying that we do do a real good package deal if you get them both together um, and that way you've got a different kit for a different job so you can keep your nice wheelchair nice and then you've got your all-terrain rugged wheelchair or, or your all-day one it's, so it's completely up to you it's worth looking at you know, the rear sense website and various other videos so that you can say in this range there's a chair and a power pack that will suit my needs. So anyway, back over to Simon. Tell us a little bit more about the beastie on the end. The Tora. <clears throat> so we do have one that's in between the Tora and the 14 inch four city. It's called the Cruiser. So 16 inch wheel, so it's nice in the middle there. Same motor as the Tora, which is a 500 watt motor plenty of power there and with a bigger wheel it's ideal for off-roading absolutely ideal um i've seen these do amazing things get the right wheels on the wheelchair as well just makes it a nice comfortable ride. yeah i've noticed that these uh wheels on the thing i mean you can just what we're going to do is we're actually going to pop over the road in a minute actually have a quick run around the park and go across some grass and what have you and uh, um, we've got uh, david here who's going to drive that for us so we do do that i can never say this is it schwabel or schwabby I'm never sure. Somebody will put me right in the comments, I'm absolutely sure. Um, but we do those as well. Now, with a great big flat tyre like that, it does really cushion things. Because, as we all know, these things are really quite fast. Um, that one's got the clamping system on it. Yet again, you can have the automatic system if you want it. So, well, it's up to you. The performance is certainly there uh, with the mid range and all the way down. Uh, we all know about the quality of the ascents. We know how good and how well they're put together. And we are going to put David on the road to come and show you these. Or make an appointment, come and show them here. We do have, and you'll find this out in a minute, literally two minutes over the road, we have a park where you can go and have a try of the, the things. There's, there's just one or two banks in there on the grass and that sort of thing as well. Go and have a play because they're just great fun. Any other comments, do you think? The only things I would say is... Insurance purposes, when you get insurance, it's limited to eight miles an hour. Correct. If you 
want to go past an eight miles an hour, you're going to have to sign something to say you've got responsibility yeah. for it. Yeah, so please remember with that, the rules are that it's eight miles an hour for a mobility product. We've been through this before with various other scooters. Just use a little bit of common sense. When you're around the town, if you're on the pavement, try and keep it nice and steady to four miles an hour. If you want to go on the road, by all means, take it up to eight miles an hour. If you're somewhere where you think it's safe and you want to go faster than that, that is completely up to you. You've signed your way before. You're responsible for that. That's, that's great. So a little bit of common sense prevails here. And as long as everybody does that, things like this will be available and everybody will be able to use them. It's just a little bit of using a bit of common sense. Um, don't be put off by the fact that you have to stick to these rules. It's a little bit like driving a car. You've got a signpost which says 30, you stick to 30, 40 and on and on. It just comes back down to yet again, and just a little bit of common sense. On private land, go for it. Cross the moors where there's nobody about, go for it. If you're in a clear zone where you can see that there's not many people about, then enjoy yourself. But please do just, just be careful and have a bit of respect for yourself because you're going to keep yourself safe because you could have an accident if you tip one up but also keep it safe for anybody who's actually out and about i hope that clears that up shall we go across to the park and have a play let's do that yeah let's do that so we'll stop here now and we'll see you in two minutes <laughs>